All right, so moving along with our uh, Zapier automation, this one is related to once the client completes the onboarding form uh, from Typeform. So we're gonna do a few things here. We're going to automatically create the uh, client info sheet inside of ClickUp. We're also going to create a Dropbox folder, and we're also going to create some files. All right, so let me go over to um, Zapier. And essentially, you just want to create a new zap. And I'm going to walk you through the entire process here. So the first thing that we select is type form. So I'm just going to, mine's already created, but I can show you uh, how to do this. All right, so you're going to choose an app. This is your trigger. This is going to be type form. So you put type form in there, and you're going to have to uh, connect it with an API key or a login. So um, it's very straightforward as you go through that. The trigger event here is new entry. So make sure that you have new entry selected and then you're going to click continue. And when you choose an account, this is where actually I believe you'll have to put your information in so you can add a new account and uh, connect it. And then you'll see uh, all the choices related to that particular account. All right, and then we're going to customize the entry. And for this, you just find your form. In this case, ours is Chimera Media uh, Client Onboarding. But when you um, use your dropdown, you'll see your forms listed. So um, obviously, you need to make sure that your form has been created in type form already in order for you to see it here. All right, and then we're going to go to Find Data. And this, I suggest uh, finishing your form and then submitting one example that you do yourself just to make sure that it works and everything. And then that sample will be pulled inside of here. All right, so you can see how we have Colorbright actually um, pulled in because that was one of the uh, clients who onboarded using this. All right, so it, it pulls in the actual data. And then as we go through the all the other steps, it will be using this information to finish uh, building out the zap. So I'm going to click done editing. So the type form version or app is done inside of this zap. Now, the next thing we want to do is use, uh, this is a utility called formatter by Z uh, Zapier. All right. So you'll select that and then you'll select utilities. There's a lot of different options here, but you're going to select utilities and here is where we want to um, get the uh, values for uh, the services that they offer. So the way Zap works is it just can find these uh, fields and values. So let me just delete this and show you. So I'm going to click this plus button here. Let's back up, click that. And then I'm going to look inside of what we pulled from Typeform. And I want to find the service types. That's what I'm looking for. You can also search as well right here. So if I just start typing service types, I can grab that right here. And that's all I wanted to do. The purpose of this is because we're going to format some of this data um, as we go. So then once you've selected that, click continue. All right. And I can see that it was successful. Here's the output it just shows um, these are the service areas, or excuse me, service uh, types that the client provided in the type form. All right, and we're just putting it in a nice format. So I'll click done editing. All right, and then so this was this utilities. So let's we have the next one now. Let's go to this one. Again, same thing. Formatter by Zapier. Utilities. Customize utilities, and then in this one we're going to select all the cities. So. Just to show you that, I can just delete this and again, find it and then it's under. So now, now that we've reached this step, we have more than just one option here with this plus. So this, when you see this plus option, it basically means that it's going to look at data from any of the uh, widget apps prior to it or utilities and whatever it may be. Um, so when you click it, now we have the type form and we also have the data from the uh, utility formatter by Zap that we already did. All we're going to do in this one is look for the cities. 
So if I type, if I start, whoops, so I have to click this again. And then we're going to look inside of the type form. That's where all the data is. All right. And then I can search here for city. So we're looking for the city names. All right. So we've got that now. And I'll click continue. And I can see that it's formatted them properly. And then I'll click done editing. All right. So this was what we just finished. Now we're going to create a folder in Dropbox. If you don't have a Dropbox account, it's very easy to create. It's free uh, up until a certain amount of size, but you get quite a bit from them. All right, so we're going to select Dropbox, Dropbox as the app, and then the action event is to create a folder. Next, we're going to choose our account. So this is where you'll input your account and log in. All right, and then we're going to customize a folder. So we have to select the folder it's going to go in. So let me just actually clear this current choice to show you how this works. Um, so first we're going to select where we want this to appear in Dropbox. And let me actually pull over my Dropbox folders. The way Dropbox works is essentially it's a cloud hard drive on your computer. If you're not familiar with that, uh, we can see that the hierarchy is Dropbox, Fusion, Chimera Media Clients. Uh, so if I go into Fusion, I've got some folders here. If I go into Chimera Media Clients, which is where I want this folder to, to appear, um, I just need to take note of that as I select these folders. So look, when I click on this, it's going to look inside of Dropbox. And then I can find Fusion. And then you click it again, and now it's going to look inside of Fusion and now I can see Chimera Media Clients. And this is where I want it to appear. And we can just confirm that by looking here. So we've got Fusion, we've got Chimera Media Clients. So this is the area, the folder that we're looking inside of right now. And that's where I want this to created. All right, um, the folder name, I want it to be the business name that they have uh, entered. So you can just find that the same way we've been finding the data we want. So you click on the plus inside of type form and we can search by name and look for confirm your business name right there, color bright painting, click continue. And then let's run a test and we're gonna see this actually um, create the folder for us. Let's see, it just popped up there. So that's the beauty of Dropbox, it does all this really nice automation stuff for us um all automatically all right so i'm going to just click done editing all right so we created the dropbox folder now we need to create a task in clickup so whenever uh, let me go up here all right so i'm as i'm doing this it just uh, created this one but i was uh, testing it earlier um so basically we want just uh, so basically under sales orders, we want to organize anytime an onboarding form is submitted so that it goes in this section here. Uh, we have two right now, but that's okay. We're just testing. Um, the, and then once it's submitted here, then we can do other things with it and we'll start putting it into its own folder and start working with it in terms of the tasks we need to complete. Going back over here. Let's just uh, go through the steps one at a time. So we have click up, we'll select that as the app, and then we're going to use create task as the action event. You'll have to input your ClickUp account here and connect it. And then we're going to customize the task. So find the name of your team, whatever it is. In this case, uh, I've got this one here. Um, and then you just have to, once you select, it's a top down approach. So once you select one, you start to see the hierarchy of everything else. So the space that we have here is client uh, or Chimera Media Client Management. The project is sales orders. So if I pop back over here, we can see sales orders is, is where we want this to appear right here. Um, let's see. All right. And then the list, which is right here, client onboarding form submitted. That's where we want this to go. Okay. So that's the list name, the task name is going to be 
this right here. So you can see when I just did that test that it created this essentially a, it's the ghost version of it that I don't necessarily need right now. But um, so this is the name that it will create. And we always use the business name just to keep it organized. All right. So task name is the business name. And how did we get that? If you recall, it's from using this and then type form and then we can search and then we just selected it like this. Okay. Uh, for the task description, let me just delete this so you can see, um, you want to use type form again, and we're just going to select form responses. That's going to give us all of the responses the client enters. Okay. And we're just going to scroll down and click continue. Go up a little bit uh, just to find it. All right. So the test was sent. Um, and that was the one that I had uh, created earlier. Um, so I can click on editing here. All right. So now at this point in the process, we've created the Dropbox folder right here. Again, nothing's in it yet. Okay. And we've also created a ClickUp task here with, uh, with all of the client form information submitted. So you can see right here, it would be their info information file that they filled out. Okay. Uh, next thing we want to do is send an outbound email. We're going to send this to, uh, to ourselves or whoever is the project manager. Um, it should just be you really when you start out. Um, and we're just going to do that by say, uh, selecting email by Zapier as the app. And then the action is send outbound email. We're going to customize the outbound email. So you put in your email address here. So this is whoever wants to receive this email. And then the subject's just going to say new client info task added to click up for, and then it's going to automatically put in the name of the business here if you use the short code. So again, I'll delete that and then just show you the process again for repetition. Right. So when you, when the, when the email is received, it's going to say a uh, new client info task added to click up for color bright painting. That would be the subject. And then the body I just put a note in here needs to be reviewed and created as a team project. Okay. And force line breaks. You can leave that as no, and then continue. Uh, you can go ahead and test it if you want, or just click on editing. I recommend just testing everything as you go through the first time. All right, so that was send the outbound email. Next, we want to create a text file. So let's click on, or let the, for you, just be adding it for the first time. So we're going to choose Dropbox again. The action this time is create a text file. Click continue, use your account. Okay, so for folder, we actually need to do something a little bit different now because we are creating essentially um, dynamic files inside of the folder we just created inside of this zap. So we just created the folder color bright painting. Um, so we need to make sure that this automation works for all new clients going forward as well, because their folder is not going to be called color bright painting, right? I hope that makes sense. So for the folder name, so where do we want to save files related to the client specific to this zap, right? It's going to be different right now. It's color bright painting, but Tomorrow it could be another painting company and we want to make sure that it always stays related to the company we're dealing with. So for folder, we're going to just click on the drop down and I'm going to scroll down and select use a custom value. And then you, we now have this section here for custom value folder path. All right. So I'm going to select insert a field go to create folder and we're going to find the uh, path that we created earlier. All right. So that is going to use whatever folder that was created above. That way we stay nice and organized for file name. I like to leave it as service underscore names. And then the file content is going to be what we took from the formatter here above. So the utilities here where we, uh, if you recall formatter by, by zap and, uh, we 
formatted the service names. So uh, let me go back in here, continue, continue. All right, so we've got the path is correct, the file name. I'll delete this and just show you. So this was the first utilities and we're just going to select that, All right? Service names and these are the service names. Uh, overwrite no and then click continue. And then I can send a test and continue. And then let's see if that file gets put in here. And there you can see inside of Colorbright Painting. So we have Chimera Media Clients, Colorbright Painting, and then it just created this service names file right there. All right. So moving along, let's click done editing. All right. We're going to create another text file in Dropbox. So again, add an another Dropbox. So add Dropbox, create text file. I'm going to select your account and let's customize what we're doing here. Um, again, use a custom value here and the path is uh, the same, getting us inside of the folder that we created uh, inside of this app. So again, the file name is related to whatever this folder is named here. Right. Uh, just to show you again, just keep, keep it really clear. You could just, if it's nothing, when you start the plus icon, you're going to click on create a folder from Dropbox and then click on path. And then that's it. All right. For service name, or excuse me, for, uh, for this one, we're going to name it service underscore areas. And this is the second utility tool we used for the content. So I'll click the plus button here. Utilities. Again, this is the second one. This is the one we just worked with. So I'll click on that and then just click on the values there. And now we, ha we have all the cities as the content and then click continue. And let's click a, uh, a retest and continue. And let's watch that file get created here. And their service areas just popped up. And now you can see we have this file. Okay. Uh, continue. Continue. All right, uh, what happened here? Oh wait, oh, this is a new file, sorry, I got confused. All right, so we just did this step here, create text file and Dropbox. Now we're on the next one. So let me just kind of start over here. So we have Dropbox one more time. And this one is again a text file. Okay, so create a text file, Dropbox, text file, continue. Okay, so here at the top again, we're going to select use a custom value because we want to stay inside of this folder that was just created inside of this particular zap. So again, uh, make sure that you use the path from Dropbox for this folder. You should see that it has the uh, uh, client's name here just to kind of show you as a reference point. But again, it will be automatically updated every time or any time a new client completes this form and their information is the one being used. All right, so for file name, uh, I just used business name, space, and then I type this in manually, so NAP schema code. So again, let me just uh, show you how I do that. Delete this. So file name is going to be, I use the type form. I use the name of the business, space, and then capital NAP schema code. For the file contents, this is going to be in your resources uh, page. So check the resources document um, and look for a uh, Google link. I'll have a Google Doc link as well in there. And it'll be called, um, let me just double check and see what I called it. And the name is Zapier Schema File Input Template. So you're just going to copy the template I give you, and it's exactly this right here. So this is what it's going to look like. So you're going to throw this in here and we're going to have a few things we need to actually modify. All right. So anywhere that you see Zapier input in brackets is what we're going to edit right now. And then anything that you see as placeholder is stuff that we have to do later on after the file is generated. It takes a little more manual work, but uh, this gets us pretty close. This is like a, you know, like a 90% solution right off the bat based on what the client already told us. 
Okay, so from top to bottom, let's just start putting in our replacements here. So for the first one here, we have name. This is the business name. Oh, there you go. Uh, this is the name of the business. So we're going to select everything in the brackets. Make sure you leave the quotes. We only want to overwrite the placeholder. And in this case, I've highlighted it, and now I'm going to find the name of the business using uh, type form. Now let's go ahead and grab name. This is the one we've been using quite a lot. And then you can see it's color bright painting. And that's going to throw that in right there. So you can see that's the dynamically inserted name of the business. Um, now let's go into telephone. Again, highlight the brackets here. All right, and I'm going to now find the telephone number using type form. Search, phone, and this is the business phone number. So go ahead and grab that. Uh, next, we need the URL. This is the URL. Let me scroll up a little bit. This is the business URL, the website address. So I'm going, I'm going to highlight this. Careful not to select the quotes. And then let's find the website. And you can see right here we have please enter your website address. And here it is. We'll select that. All right. Uh, and now same as. This would be the social profiles if they have any. Um, but we're going to assume that they do. This is basically creating a universal zap. We only have to set this up once. And no matter what client onboards, the same one applies for them all. So uh, this is a little bit of work up front, but keep in mind, you only do this one time ever. All right, uh, so let's look at the social profiles that they inserted. And I'm going to look up Facebook. All right, so enter their Facebook URL. So good, they put that in. You can see that's there. Let's do the next one. And again, this is in type form. We're going to look for, they have a Twitter. They don't have a Twitter, but we're still, we're still preparing as if they may have entered it. So again, this is where you're gonna have to go into the file afterwards. And I'll show you how to do that, where you have to just kind of make a few small edits. All right, so but let's prepare for the potential client that has all of these social profiles. All right, so the other ones to put in, we have Instagram. And this particular client has Instagram, so that's good. Let's see, what else do we have here? We should have, I believe, I think I put Yelp in here. Yes. Uh, so this client didn't have their Yelp listing URL. Uh, let's see what else we asked for. I believe we have, uh, oops, first I have to click on type form, then I can search. I think YouTube was the other one, YouTube channel, URL. All right, in this case, the client didn't have any. That may have been it. Let's just, let me just look again. So I'm just going to kind of scroll through actually and look. So we, oh, LinkedIn was the other one. All right, so let's look at, let's click enter your LinkedIn page URL here. So if they had it, that's where that would appear. Um, again, this particular client, like I said, there's gonna be some blank spaces here that we have to clean up, um, but that's fine. All right, so anything that says placeholder, that's not for us to edit now, we'll come back to it. We're only concerned with ones that have Zapier input placeholders like this. So for street address, Let's go over to what the customer entered, the client entered, and find the address. And we can search for it if we wanted to. I'm just going to kind of look through here. All right, so we've got the street address of your business. All right, so this is actually pretty good. I'm going to use this as an example. So this is the street address. The way we have the form and you can try to clarify it more in your form, but we try to get them to enter the, the number and the street only. So the street address, and then we ask for the city and then we ask for the zip. 
uh, this particular client ended up entering everything in the very first question. I'm still going to use it here and then clean it up later just because um, I need to uh, prepare for a universal type of situation here where, like I said, where maybe the next client's going to do it correctly. All right. Um, all right, so let's just move along. Uh, so for this next line here, address locality, this is where we want to put the city. All right, so again, I'm selecting the brackets. I'm going to find the city for the type form. And here it is, green lawn in this case. Okay, and for region, uh, that's where we're going to select the state. So let's highlight all of this. And then we're just going to do a quick search for state. What is the state of your business address? And in this case, it's New York. Okay. Postal code. Okay. It's going to get the zip code here. Do a search for the zip. What is the zip code of your business? Here it is. 11740. All right. And United States, we just leave. Um, of course, you know, adjust your placeholder here, your zap accordingly. But, um, for us, all our clients come from the U S and then let's see, we have placeholder, placeholder. We have one more zap your input here for the phone number. And I'm actually going to select out this plus one as well, because it's included in this input already. All right. So I'm just going to grab the phone number one last time. All right, and now let's give it a quick once over. So we've got all the information replaced properly. All right, and then the placeholders will remain for now. And then overwrite now. So that all looks good. Let's click continue. And now we can just click on uh, test and continue. And when we bring over this folder, we should see it get generated inside of here. And there it is, color bright painting, nap schema code. So when I click on this, we can see that name, just color bright painting. We've got the phone number, the URLs. Um, now this is what I was talking about earlier that we have to clean up, you know, cause we've got extra junk lines in here that didn't have certain profiles. This is usually the only section where this is comes into play. Um, I have a checklist video that we're going to go over, which will cover just fixing this up a little bit. Um, but yeah, this is uh, exactly what we wanted. And once you're done with that and you verify that it created it, you can click done editing. And then just make sure that you turn this on. There's usually a toggle switch. When you create it for the first time, you usually see it at the bottom, but since I'm editing mine, um, it's up here. So I'll just turn this on. And sometimes you just gotta wait a little bit. It'll go on there. There it goes. All right. So now when any new client comes in and fills out their type form, a few things are going to happen. Uh, it's going to get formatted properly for the service, uh, uh, types, the service, uh, areas. We're going to create a Dropbox folder with that client's name inside of whatever uh, organizational hierarchy you have in Dropbox. It doesn't have to necessarily be the way I had it. It could just be in the root folder. You could just call your main folder clients. And then inside of clients is where you create this Dropbox folder. Uh, we're going to create that task in ClickUp. If you recall, let um, me go back under sales orders. So color bright painting was created here automatically. And then this allows us to review it and then create the folder. This pretty much starts the entire process for us because once it comes into here, then we'll uh, create the folder and start working with that client. Uh, so we've done that. We sent an outbound email to you or whoever needs to be notified that, Hey, someone just filled out the onboarding form. It's time to get some work done. 
we created the text files for both the service names or the uh, service types and the service areas. So we pull those up. We have service names, service areas. And then lastly, we created the schema file, which essentially is a partial file because as I said, we'll have to go in here, we'll have to update the placeholders and we'll have to just kind of clean up some of the uh, social profile URLs as well. But this gets us very close to a finished file and it's just uh, another step to not have to really worry about. It just makes life easier. All right, so that is it for um, this Zapier, Zapier, whatever you want to call it, automation. And everything will continue from here with uh, the checklist verification uh, in order for us to start working with the client. All right, I will see you in the next video.